G'day guys, so here I've got the base which I wired together in a previous tutorial, you can find that in the links down below. Uh, but if you've wired it all up, it doesn't have to be the same button set up as mine, but once you've wired up your base, here's how we're going to test it. And this will actually incidentally also work for sticks and throttles and any of those, as long as you can plug it into the USB. So open up your Arduino IDE, mine's got a dark background, you don't need that. And I'll just show you a quick example of what we need to do. So first we need to set the pin mode for one of these joysticks. Now I can't remember which one's which, but I wire them into pins A0, A1, A2, and A3. So I'll just pick A0 as a demonstration. I'm not sure which actual control that is. So first we need to set the pin mode for that pin. So pin mode for A0 and the pin mode will be input. The options are input, input pull-up, for which is when they're using our internal pull-up switches, which the analog controls don't need to use. And there's also output for if you're like turning on a light or putting out power for any reason, but we're, we're getting an input. And so that's set into input mode. And now all we need to do is to get the value. And you get that by typing analog read. So that's getting an analog read from the pin from pin A0, and that's it. That's how we read it, but we can't see that at the moment. So in order to see it ourselves, we're just going to activate the serial subsystem. So you will begin 115200, and then we're just gonna say serial.println, and feed that number into that. So that opens up a serial channel at a board rate of 115200, and this will print this value uh, with a character uh, with a carriage return on the end. And I'm just going to put a little delay at the bottom just so it doesn't run too fast. And that's it. Now we're going to get a signal from A0 and see if she's working. So we just go tools, make sure your board is set to the Arduino Genuino Micro. Make sure when you set the port, it's not none or the wrong one in there that you can see that's the right one for me. And then we upload. It'll ask you to save. Um, I'm not going to save it this time around. We're uploading, we're uploading, and we're done uploading. So now up the top right, you've got your little, oh, you can't see it on here. Let's do it through here. You've got your serial monitor button. There is also a button here you can use to do that. So let's do that. And you can see here's my serial monitor and I'm getting this number 599. And let's see which control is it. Not that one, not that one. There we go. So that's connected to our potentiometer for our Y axis. And you can see we're getting a nice smooth value out of that. And now let's just quickly try it for one of these buttons. Now I'm pretty sure I've got one on pin nine. So let's try that. So I'm just gonna switch these around pin nine Pin nine, upload again. And so we're getting a zero response and let's see if one of the, there we, no, not that one. Not. Now I'm getting a little bit of noise in there. And now that's because if you watched the previous video, you saw that we used the input pull-up resistors, which we haven't actually turned on here. So whenever we're using the switches, unless we've actually added our own resistors into the circuit, we need to activate it as an input pull-up. So see now we're getting this little value here. And there you go, it's connected to that switch. So on, off, on, off. But one thing we should do is we don't really want this weird number of a 15 up to 1023. It's an on or off switch. We just want a zero or a one. And the reason we're getting this number from zero to 1023 is because we're using analog read. We don't want an analog value. We want a digital value. So we'll switch that to digital read. Upload again. And now you can see we're getting a nice zero or one. Right, now we could go through and check every pin individually that way, but that's that's not a great way to do it. 
let's get them all at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is actually create an array. So I'll create an array of input pins, and it's gonna hold every pin that we can use on the Arduino Pro Micro. So let's do the A0, whoops, A1, A2, A3, our analog pins, and then our digital ones. There's two and three, but we're not gonna use those, so we'll leave those out of our list. If you can remember, the two and three are for the communication connected to this port here, not for buttons. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 16, 14, and 15. They don't have to be in numerical order. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this in uh, this pin mode command, but for all of them. So we're just gonna make a little for loop. For int i equals zero, i is less than, and how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I plus plus. And instead of doing pin nine, we will do pin i. So if you're not familiar with arrays, what this will do is our loop will run 14 times. First time it runs, i will equal zero. And every time it loops through, i will have one more added to it. So first time it'll be zero, then one, then two, then three. And ah, that should be pin node i. We're not just gonna put zero, one, two. We're gonna put input pins number i. So now what we're gonna do from this array, we're gonna get number zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, and so on, all the way through to the 14th one. And for reporting it, we do the exact same thing. We'll actually just copy that loop. And we're getting a read from that. Now what I'm gonna do, so I can get all the reports in one line, we're gonna do a few little serials here. So first, we'll print, uh, let's print, yeah, print i. So we know if it's a zero, one, we'll get an actual index there. Serial dot print. And then I'm just gonna put a little colon like that. And then we'll actually print our value. But it, oh, you notice I'm not using print line. Print line puts a carriage return at the end. So it will go to the next line, go to the next line, go to the next line. We don't want to do that. All this, all this is going to be in one line. And then after we've gotten that value, we're going to go serial.print, and I'm going to put a tab in between them. And then after it's gone through the whole loop, then we'll do an empty serial print line, which will go to the next line. So we'll get all the reports all in one line, then do a carriage return. And let's how that, see how that looks. Yeah, we'll stretch this a bit now. And so we've got number zero, number one, number two, number three, number four, and all my values there. And let's see if I push a button. Yeah, that's button number 11, 12, 13, 14. My toggles are number nine and number eight. Uh, but you'll see I'm not really getting anything from these guys. And see if I turn this one all the way to max and min. I am getting a one or a zero, but that's not really what I want. And that's because right now we're treating these as digitals, which we don't want to do. So let's fix that. So we've got our loop here and all our analogs are in our first four values there. So what I'll just do is if I is less than four, so I'll just copy that to each one. So if I is less than four, we're not going input pull up, we're just going a regular up. We don't need the pull-up resistors on our analog pins. And then we'll do the exact same thing down here. We won't do a digital read for the ones that are less than four. For our analog pins, we're going to do analog read. Let's see how that works. So now, So we've got number three working. Got number two working. Zero is working. 
And you can see we are getting a little bit of noise in between the two. So, oh no, it's just because I wasn't moving it cleanly. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. At yeah, first I thought I was getting noise between one and the other, but it's really just because I wasn't e clearly moving it on the one line. I was moving a little bit left and right as I went. So that's it. We're getting nice clean signals from all of them. And it looks like I've still got pins four, five, six, and seven, which I haven't used for anything. So you could add four more buttons to this if you really wanted. Okay, now what's good, if you ever want to use that again, you can just save it now. And I'll just save it as joystick input tester. So let's leave that one there, nice and short. Um, I'll do another one soon that will let you actually convert these inputs. Instead of just sending them through the serial monitor, you can actually send them as joystick inputs. Um, of course, you can always go and skip all of this and just use my firmware and software to set it up yourself. But if you are interested in how the coding works, I'll see you in the next tutorial.